Hello, it's me again, chapter 41 in holes. And I've been sitting still a while, so my feet are kind of jittery. All right, chapter 41. Zero's condition continued to improve. Stanley slowly peeled an onion. He liked eating them one layer at a time. The water hole was now almost as large as the hole he had dug back at Camp Green Lake. It contained almost two feet of murky water. Stanley had dug it all himself. Zero had offered to help, but Stanley thought it better for Zero to save his strength. It was a lot harder to dig in water than it was in a dry lake. So if you need to get caught up, please do, because this is a fabulous book. And once you're done with the book, uh, you could put the movie on your list of things to see. And I remember it having um, a good soundtrack. Just to kind of give you some back notes, this book was copy written 1998. So it's a little bit of an older book. And I don't remember what year Disney came out with the movie. But I remember back when I lived in Hastings, one of uh, my students, her dance number uh, was to the holes, dig them up holes. So let's get the book finished and then maybe you and your family could watch the movie. So to also recap, they are on God's thumb. Uh, Zero is gaining his strength from onions and the murky water they dig up. Uh, Stanley went down the mountain to get the shovel and the glass jars and that's where we picked up. Stanley was surprised that he himself hadn't gotten sick, either from the sploosh, the dirty water, or from living on onions. He used to get sick quite a lot back at home. Both boys were barefoot. They had washed their socks. All their clothes were very dirty, but their socks were definitely the worst. They didn't dip their socks into the hole, afraid to contaminate the water. Instead, instead they filled the jars and poured the water over their dirty socks. I didn't go to the homeless shelter very often, Zero said, just if the weather was really cold. I'd have to find someone to pretend to be my mom. If I'd just gone by myself, they would have asked me a bunch of questions. If they'd found out I didn't have a mom, they would have made me a ward of the state. What's a ward of the state? Zero smiled. I don't know, but I didn't like the sound of it. Stanley remembered Mr. Pendensky telling the warden that Zero was a ward of the state. He wondered if Zero knew he'd become one. I liked sleeping outside, said Zero. I used to pretend I was a Cub Scout. I always wanted to be a Cub Scout. I'd see them at the park in their blue uniforms. I was never a Cub Scout, said Stanley. I wasn't good at social stuff like that. Kids made fun of me because I was fat. I liked the blue uniform, said Zero. Maybe I wouldn't have liked being a Cub Scout. Zero Stanley shrugged one shoulder. My mother was a once a Girl Scout, said Zero. I thought you said you didn't have a mother. Everybody has a mother. Yeah, well, I know that. She said she once won a prize for selling the most Girl Scout cookies, said Zero. She was real proud of that. Stanley peeled off another layer of his onion. We always took, we only took what we needed, Zero said. When I was little, I didn't even know it was stealing. I don't remember when I found out. But we just took what we needed, never more. So when I saw the shoes on display in the shelter... I reached in the glass and took them. Clyde Livingston's shoes, said Stanley. I didn't know they were his. I just thought they were somebody's old shoes. It was better to take someone's old shoes, I thought, than steal a pair of new ones. I didn't know they were famous. There was a sign, but of course I couldn't read it. Then the next thing I know, everybody's making this big deal about how the shoes are missing. It was kind of funny in a way. The whole place is going crazy, and there I was, wearing the shoes. And everyone's running around saying, what happened to the shoes? The shoes are gone. I just walked out the door. No one noticed me. When I got outside, I ran around the corner and immediately took off the shoes. I put them on top of a parked car. I remember they smelled really bad. Yeah, those, those were them, said Stanley. Did they fit you? Pretty much. Stanley remembered being surprised at Clyde Livingston's small shoe size. Stanley's shoes were bigger. Clyde Livingston had small, quick feet. Stanley's feet were big and slow. I should have just kept them, said Zero. I'd already made it out of the shelter and everything. I ended up getting arrested the next day when I tried to walk out of a shoe store with a new pair of sneakers. If I had just kept those old, smelly sneakers, then neither of us would be here right now. So Zero um, admits to stealing Clyde Livingston's shoes. 
Remember um, earlier in the story, Stanley talked about how the shoes seem to fly from the sky. So we talked about an overpass. So we're going to pretend that this is a bridge. I know, I'm an excellent drawer. Up here is a bridge, and then down here is the road. And we know that the shoes fell from the sky, and Stanley's the one that, catch, that caught them. These are going to be shoes. You know I'm not a very good drawer. We know that the shoes seem to fall from the sky, and Stanley is the one that got arrested for stealing Clyde Livingston's shoes. So in chapter 41, uh, Zero admits to that. Uh, keep doing your homework. Keep enjoying Read Aloud. We'll get through this.